Okay, we are recording now. Good morning, everyone. This is Monica Olson from the State Board. It's good to see everyone here today. Thanks for joining us. Um, before we get started, I'll just do a few housekeeping announcements and then turn it over to Sandy, our, the co-host of this meeting to go over the agenda and get us started. So um, we do have a CART captioner here providing services for us today. If you need to see live transcription, please hit the CC button at the bottom of your screen so that you can view transcription. Feel free to send me a private chat message if you need additional access support or technical assistance. I'm here to help as much as possible. Um, we are recording today's meeting as we have done all previous open forum sessions. Uh, this video recording will be hosted on the accessibility webpage, CTC Link accessibility webpage on the State Board website. Um, if you, uh, as we go through today's agenda, if you find that you have a question or comment, we definitely welcome discussion. Um, if you choose to type your comment or question in the chat, I will do my best to moderate the chat today as I've done before. It can be hard to speak and present as well as moderate the chat. Um, you also are free to unmute yourself and ask a question or share a comment as well. Um, I ask that every time you take the mic, um, and this includes presenters as well, in order to provide access to each other, we will share our name first and then go on with what we want to um, share with the group today. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to share to get us going. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sandy. Good morning, Monica. Hello, everybody. This is Sandy May, Director of Application Services at the State Board. And I would like uh, Christopher Soren to introduce and uh, for his team for those that um, haven't met them yet or participated in any of these forums. Um, this team is pretty much the sole group that is um, addressing accessibility related items within CTC Link. So I'm going to give all the credit to Christopher and his team. So I would like for him to. Um, introduce his team. Christopher? Chris, sure thing. Yeah, I'm Christopher Soren, the Application Support Manager, and I have the privilege of working with some uh, amazing folks every day. So uh, we have two PeopleSoft developer and support engineers that are uh, also with us. We have uh, Pamisha. Maybe we can introduce hey, everybody. <laughs> and we also have uh, Josh. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I'm very grateful to get to work with such amazing people every day. So yeah, they do great work with all this accessibility updates to CTC Link. This is Sandy and thank you, Christopher. I I want to say that I I struggled um, trying to get things moving and it wasn't until um, Christopher came on board and really uh, put together this team that we have made some significant improvements. And it's amazing now that we have Monica here to help us uh, partner with us on this um, great adventure. So I see every month things are getting better and better because of the work that they're doing and also from input from the community. So I do appreciate continue providing feedback um, on things. So for the agenda today, we want to talk a little bit about the immunization collection project. We have a few other updates within that, and I'll let Christopher's team go into more in-depth um, conversation on what those activities are. Uh, he'll give an update on, or him and his team will give an update on some of the um, Oracle support requests that we have, uh, outstanding kind of what has moved, what hasn't. <laughs> and then we'll leave it, um, this kind of question and answers and college sharing almost about the same thing. Uh, if uh, anybody has anything they want us to kind of refocus on and talk about, that'll give us an opportunity towards the end. And college sharing, I didn't have, or um, I don't think we received any requests this month for anything new to be added. So we do welcome people to contribute or, or add comments. So I'm going to advance to the next slide and um, start off with 
the immunization collection project. So, um, well, talk about a uh, moving target. So as you all know, things have changed dramatically and they seem to change. Um, you know, once it was monthly, the daily, weekly, it just was all over the place. So we were instructed both on the CTC link side, PeopleSoft, and with our legacy side to um, come up with a solution for individuals, both students and employees, to provide immunization information to their college. And we had to build something that's very difficult to get a solution that, that fits everybody. So we, we and considering the short timeline, we just kind of went ahead and jumped into it and started putting something together. And really it was in response to the governor's um, proclamation, the higher education proclamation, and also some of the Department of Labor, DSHS, and all these different areas kind of putting input into what's happening across the state. So for both CTC Link and uh, Legacy System, we build a collection for employees and for students to go in and do what's called a self-attestation. So basically they are um, accessing those systems and providing information on um, which vaccines they have uh, received to date, or if they are claiming an exemption they can put that information in. So as we talked about moving targets, you know, we didn't have exemptions, then we had them in, and then we had three exemptions, which was um, medical, religious, and philosophical, and then we took out philosophical. So it appears that uh, every day seems to be a little bit different. So um, we, we do have uh, areas within both systems for students and employees to record that information and um, do a self-attestation. Yes, this information is, is true and accurate. Um, I understand that um, you can have disciplinary action if you falsify the information, and also that there could be some follow-up by staff. And then things change again, and um, now it is required for employers to ver verify the information. But we um, were very much aware that not everybody has full access for whatever reason to be able to do the self-attestation information. So, um, you know, it might be their location, they don't have internet access, um, have issues just navigating it. So we did um, create an area within both systems where employees, designated employees on campus can actually record the information on behalf of a student or an employee. They're more than likely different people that are doing that. It's very isolated on who has access to that information because we uh, consider it to be highly sensitive. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, students, employees can re self report. Um, college staff can follow up. There's some reporting. And um, I know they're starting to hear rumbling out there about the ability to add booster information. And just want to let everybody know that right now, the decision is we're going to hold on collecting uh, that information until we get um, specific instructions from the state office if we are going to be um, or if we need to capture that information. So really keeping it at what do we need to do the um, state requirements at this point. So um, Christopher, do you mind um, if your team can jump into giving an update on the accessibility front? on the immunization project? Sure, so yeah, we received some reports of some of the issues with the, the, the self-attestation pages, um, both on the, the screen reader mode and then the non-screen reader mode. And of course, I agree that a system shouldn't have a screen reader and non-screen reader mode, but that's the way Oracle designed it. And so we have to live with that. Um, <clears throat> so the some of the issues in the, in the non-screen reader mode are expected because it's in the non-screen reader mode. Um, so we've made some additional customizations to the screen reader mode to, to address some of, these, um, some of these reported issues. And we've also, uh, we're going to be making a service request to the Oracle um, due to a delivered way for how they, how the switch form control is read when it's in the screen reader mode. So, but we, we were able to, to address um, except for that particular aspect of it, the rest of the uh, reported issues in the, in the screen reader mode. So we have that 
development done. Um, we have the testing done and we should have it in our QA environment um, later this week for um, the colleges to help uh, test it out. Go ahead, Maggie. So for those that don't know me, I'm Megan from Clark College. For those that do, they're not a surprise that I'm always the one with the first question. So uh, what is the recommendation from the state board on how to help students complete this? Because it's not fully compliant. It's not fully accessible. Um, so what is that process? Sandy kind of mentioned and something is possible for someone to do this for a student behind the scenes. So this is Sandy there, um, each college, and this is up to the college to determine how they want to approach this, but there is a role within um, PeopleSoft because you're on a, you're in CTC link already. So in CTC link, there is a role that can be assigned to staff, both um, the separate roles in HCM for employees and then H, um, CS for students where that um, whoever is assigned that role has a screen that they can go into, pull up information on a particular student or staff and record the, um, the either the, um, sorry, the exception or exemption, excuse me, or the actual vaccination immunization information. So it could be that someone has brought in their immunization information and they're just recording it on behalf of the individual, but the college determines who has that access mm -hmm. to it. And it's determined every college will make that decision how they want to assign that role and what their process is for collecting and recording that information. We just basically made it possible. Thank you. And then a com this is Megan again from Clark College. So a question for the group and the state board and relates to Marissa Hackett's chat. Uh, which says if a, which means a student would have a less confidential process if they have to have help, which means a student with a disability, this is in Megan's words, a student with a disability who has accessibility needs has a less confidential process, right? Differential treatment. So anybody on the call, what, what are your suggestions or ideas on what colleges or disability services offices or, or, or another office, like what, what are your ideas on how we support students who can't do this process because it's not available to them because of accessibility? Can I uh, jump in? This is Padma from Christopher's team. So uh, there was a list of things that were given to us from Monica, uh, uh, we received the list of things that uh, the, the users had trouble with in not a screen reader mode. So I, I de like designed a completely separate accessible page focused just, just for screen reader mode. And uh, is it okay to demo it quickly or? There are several things I changed where the uh, sections are read properly. The the button to uh, for instructions was not not very quickly uh, readily access uh, available. Means it was kind of confusing in that mode. So I put those instructions right on the page, then. Uh, label things correctly, change the switch control to check boxes. So that page is ready. So based on which mode they log on, they will get standard mode page or screen reader mode page. And uh, also the date pattern, which was not clear. So I have put something as a placeholder where the uh, pattern is very clearly, I uh, will say that it is MMDDYYY. So, there are a number of changes I did and actually designed a special page just for accessibility. It is ready. I have the development is complete. Uh, Josh has tested it and uh, we both tested it. And uh, it will be, uh, correct me, Monica, if I'm wrong, it will be in UIT uh, soon. So it will, uh, it's, it will come soon. Thanks Padma for that technical update. 
and Chris and Sandy and Megan. Uh, this is Monica from the State Board. I'm going to share a couple of comments and address a few questions in the chat. So first, I'm going to I'm going to take a step back because I think there's several several sort of items that we're piecing apart here. Um, <clears throat> um, so, uh, when the attestation form was first was first developed, a couple of, of folks uh, from Cato um, did some did some testing after it went live and provided me with a summary of some accessibility issues, which I like Padma said and, and Chris said um, I delivered to their team. They jumped on it immediately. Padma has been working really hard to fix those technical and functional accessibility issues specifically within screen reader mode. So for folks who need to use a screen reader to access and complete the attestation form, um, those, those issues are being remediated. It's my understanding that, you know, uh, internal testing happens within the development team and IT department first and the Cato members who did testing previously and provided me with a report of their findings have offered to look at it again. Um, so we'll have that that double check as well. I think um, Megan's comment around, you know, what is what are our suggestions from the state board um, around best practices of how staff at college can help students fill this form out if they need assistance is still a good question for us to <clears throat> continue to talk about because there might be other reasons that are not disability related. Uh, that may prevent a student um, or may create extra challenges for a student to complete the form. So there's a variety of reasons why some a staff college member might end up needing to help someone fill that form out that may or may not have to do with disability status or the use of a screen reader. So right now, my initial thought is uh, this meeting might not be the best format to develop. <laughs> Those comments or guidelines. Um, I'm thinking if folks if folks agree with my thought process that this could be an additional conversation that I help lead um, with leadership at the state board and with uh, DSSC board and kind of close that loop once I can have a chat with some other folks at the state board around that process. There was before I I'm going to hand it over here in a minute. Um, Megan asked when the more accessible version is going to be available. So that's the one that uh, Padma's working on. Josh said August 12th in the oh nope sorry he said disregard that. And I'm checking to see if there's any other comment or question. Yep. This is said, uh, uh, it is in uh, UAT means it's in the third stage of uh, testing customer acceptance testing basically and uh, it will be released it's ready it's just that couple of processes are remaining so uh, i will let christopher <laughs> yeah sure so yeah. we wanted to confirm all the all the changes on the customized page uh, the everybody the representatives from cato agreed that uh, those that met all of their expectations um and since we have customizations both in the hcm pillar and the cs pillar um, we're, we've started with the HCM pillar, um, since we know we have that October 18th deadline coming up for all the staff. And then, um, as soon as that passes UAT, we're going to duplicate that effort and work that, um, in CS and, and get all those changes in for the, for the students as well. Um, so we're, we're making sure that the, all the updates are exactly as expected, um, on the HCM side, and then, uh, we'll hop right over to duplicating that in CS. So, uh, the, if assuming there's no redevelopment needed and everything is as as expected um I, it should be in production in the next week or two um so soon and it looks like uh, marissa has her hand raised so go ahead marissa thanks chris uh this is marissa hackett she her pronouns bellevue college and dssc board um so in addition to the accessibility concerns with the form, um, have you all tested that that part of CTC link um, does or does not override when a student is dual enrolled at multiple colleges? So this is Christopher from the State Board. So when the student, it's associated with their person, 
Um, so even if they're associated with multiple institutions, um, it would, if the student were to update that information, it would be updated for themselves um, at whatever right. time they updated it. So it, it's going to be, it, no matter how many institutions they're enrolled in, it's associated with them as a person and will stay up to date. Okay, so that means that if a student is enrolled at Clark and enrolled at TCC and they're both using the CTC link way to capture um, immunization status that if a student applies for an exemption at one that that may show up at the other because it's on the person record. So that means when colleges are thinking about how you're doing your exemption process um, that you may need to keep that piece in mind that uh, the data is going to go across colleges if a student's enrolled at more than one college. This is for Morgan. It is employee specific and not institution specific, the data. Thank you. This is Monica from the State Board. Thank you, Marissa, for your question and comment. And Padma, I see Jamie Heidelberg has her hand raised. Jamie, would you like to take the mic? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Jamie Hattelberg from Green River College. I just wanted to, it might be an obvious question, so I apologize. Um, is the inaccessibility of this attestation form also with the HCX mobile app? So this is Christopher uh, from the State Board. So we originally, so it is not in the HCX app at this, at this time, the link to the COVID attestation, no one need to access it um, going directly in the CTC link through a web browser, not through the HCX app. Okay, thank you. Yep. So this is Sandy, are we good to move forward with the online admissions application update? Thanks, Sandy. This is Monica. Just a minute, I'm, I'm doing my best to read through the chat. I wanna make sure I've captured everything. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, this is Holly De uh, Kish with Spokane Community Colleges. I'm just wondering, is this deck gonna be available after the meeting for everyone? Is there some um, people that I'd like to share it with? This is Monica. Yes, this is the answer to, the answer to your question, Holly. Thank you. My deck will be posted online. Thank you. Um, and Susan shared in chat that she plans to ask her own campus leadership around who are the responsible persons on campus identified that might that are responsible to help students with the form if they cannot fill it out for some reason or another. So that and that that I think that question of who who's responsible and how, what that process looks like. Um, if DSS leadership would like me to help move that conversation along and ask them take some questions back to state board leadership, I'm I'm more than happy to continue involvement in that conversation. Um, it, that might be that those process questions um, likely won't be addressed through the, gr the group of hosts that you have here today. This is Monica again, Jamie, I see your hand and I see AJ has a question in the chat as well. Okay, AJ can go ahead first. Okay, um, AJ, do you want to take the mic or do you prefer that I share your question out with the group? Uh, AJ from Bellevue College, sure I can do it. Um, I'd like to go back to Marissa's point 
Um, it, this is staying on the person record, which means a student who's dual enrolled and gets an exemption at one, that gets entered into CTC link, but there isn't one standardized exemption process across all the CTCs. So then a second school who the student didn't go through their process where it's a different process, removes that exemption because student either didn't go through their process or didn't qualify through their process. They remove that, that's then showing up with the first school who's like, wait, this student did receive an exemption. How, I, I'm curious the, on anyone from the SBCTC on how to reconcile that. So this is Sandy. Uh, Monica, did you wanna go say something? I don't wanna interrupt you. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, this is Monica again from the State Board. And Sandy, if what if what I'm about to share uh, is you feel differently, please please just go ahead and say so. I think um, the we are discovering some really great questions around process across the 34 colleges and confidentiality and how the and and the fact that each college is doing their attestation form review and capture a little bit differently. Um, my thought is that the 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 group of people we have hosting today, primarily myself and folks from IT, this is not the appropriate group to answer all of those process oriented questions. I am thinking that I need to take some of this back to folks at the state board like Joe Holiday and Carly Schiffner for some feedback um, and then follow up with the group. Sandy, if you have additional information that I am not aware of though, please comment and share. Oh, this is Sandy. No, you you said it perfectly. Thank you. Thanks everyone for your questions and comments. Um, if we have more questions or comments around the um, technical accessibility pieces of the attestation form or what's happening next in UAT, we certainly can spend some more time talking about that. Um, I will take the other process and confidentiality questions back to other leadership at the state board. I promise you all that right now. Um, and if we don't have other comments around the accessibility and functionality of the attestation form, we can move on to the next agenda item. So I'll just give folks another minute to indicate if they have an additional question or comment. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, this is Monica again. So Sandy, I think we're in the clear to move on to the next agenda item. I know I know this is a tough time and this is this is a lot that we're all doing collectively and individually on our campuses. So I just want to appreciate every everyone for being here and asking questions and I apologize we don't have all the answers for you today, but thank you for, for showing up and being a part of this conversation. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. Uh, this is Sandy. Christopher, you wanna go ahead and um, continue on with the OAP update? Yeah, sure thing. 
So we, um, Josh can expand on this a bit, but we had, there was a, a couple of minor things with some RA labels. It wasn't uh, announced in the screen or uh, menu expanded, menu collapsed. And um, so on August 12th, those changes were made in, in OAAP. So those are there. Hi, this is yeah, Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah, hi, this is Josh. There's not much to expand on. Um, we kind of talked about this in our last meeting. Um, we went over a few of the OAP minor fixes that they were um, going to be introducing. It was, there are some um, menu buttons that when you clicked on them, they expanded and collapsed, but they weren't announcing it to the screen readers. So they, they fixed those errors and a couple other minor user experience things. Um, like when you click, selected uh, your name in the account portion of the screen in the top right, it opened up like a, a modal in the center of the page. Now it just opens it up as a, like a, a a smaller menu at the top right corner. So just minor things like that, those are now in production. Thanks, Josh. You wanna to continue to roll on with image 22? Oh, <laughs> okay. So with image 22, um, we approached this uh, slightly different than we have with previous images up, up, updates. Uh, we're not, going with the full image update where we pulled uh, minor things because we ran into an issue with CS21 where it introduced more bugs than it fixed. <laughs> um, so um, with CS22, we figured we'll let other uh, colleges run into those bugs and we'll um, um, pick it up once it's more stable and get the rest of it into production. We just put the, uh, financial aid and the things that were needed um, um, for regulatory items uh, into uh, th this image update. So uh, amongst those items like financial aid, ICER, and these are financial aid uh, staff pages, they made a couple minor details um, having to do with uh, labels. And on one page, they, um, fix the tab order. The tab order didn't make a logical sense. So now they fix it to where um, you're, if you're keyboard navigating through the, the page, it, it makes sense with the, with the tab order. And that's about it. There's only three bug fixes with this update. And uh, two of those were labels and one was tab order. Thanks, Josh. This is Sandy Main at the State Board. Um, to add a little bit to uh, that, just for those that aren't familiar, when we say image, that basically is a software update that comes from Oracle. And so the CS Image 22 is their um, campus solution, software update 22. And like Josh said, we only did like a pick and choose what we did, um, what we wanted to implement. But uh, there is a link in the slide deck, which is also already posted on our um, accessibility website, but it includes what's um, we refer to as an image overview document or IOVD. And in that talks about um, the changes that are being implemented into production with this image or software update. And it also uh, goes into detail on the accessibility fixes. So we encourage people to review the IOVD and to see what those changes, those specific changes are. This is Christopher from the State Board. So I'm gonna continue on this. So we're continuing to meet with Oracle, getting updates on our service requests that we have with them. Um, so making some progress on some of them. Um, the next slide, it's got a little more details. Um, I'll go into that. So one of the other things that came up last time we got some clarification on um, was when we asked them, when should we use screen reader mode or not screen reader mode, um, depending on the assistive technology being used. So there's more than just screen readers, certainly. Um, and so they got back to us saying that um, they don't have any guidance on, on which specific disability should use screen reader mode versus not screen reader mode. But um, it might be dependent on the type of assistive technology that you're using. 
Um, so, I mean, we found the best experience for a screen reader is using uh, JAWS. And um, so in, in Firefox, but um, certainly if you have different assistive technology, uh, you could choose whether to use screen reader mode or not. Um, and the we also are continuing with our uh, HCM accessibility monthly focus group calls uh, as we're as they continue to show us all the new things coming down coming down later as they're as they're making updates for 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 future um, images or, or people tools updates. That's all in this slide. Thanks for the next slide, Sandy. So we have. The first one there is the academic advisement report. So it has the, the incorrect PDF tags. So they, we have we know the fix is coming in CS image 24. Um, like we mentioned a couple slides earlier, we're implementing uh, pieces of image 22. Uh, we also uh, have requested a, a POC, which is a proof of concept from them. Um, so we're waiting for them, uh, their development team to, to deliver us that fix and then we'll We'll test it, uh, make sure it's actually fixing what they say it is, <laughs> so, and uh, and then and then work that up the production stack. Um, so there's also in the purchase orders, uh, there is an incorrect tab order. There's kind of a theme there with the PDFs, and uh, <laughs> so that fix they do have a fix coming in FS image 41, and but we've also uh, they've also given us a PRP. So we we and we've tested it, um, and so it should be coming to our 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 quality assurance environment soon. So that's been working its way out. So that one should be in production in not too long if we had some additional time to do some uh, quality assurance on it. There were, uh, we received three reported accessibility issues uh, with related to travel authorizations. There's a variety of pages within the travel authorization um, area. And they were reported back in June, and two of them were resolved in uh, People Tools 85721. So that's nice. Uh, there, was, there was one issue on the travel authorization grid. Uh, there was an attachment button. It, it, when, you, when you read over it, it didn't have a label. And so we've been working with Oracle to get a fix on that. And um, so we're, wait, we're waiting to get hear back from them uh, through our service request to get, get fixed for that particular piece. Uh, but it's nice we two of those got resolved. And then the additional updates on the W2 PDF. So we, they've continued to make a little bit of progress on that. So RR Donnelly is a company that provides the, the they were providing locked inaccessible PDFs to Oracle. Oracle is delivering them um, through PeopleSoft and you'd go to download it and it wouldn't be accessible. Um, so RR Donnelly has provided a tags PDF to Oracle. And so Oracle's reviewing their their technologies to make sure that uh, they can deliver it to us uh, without any modifications, or if they, do need, if they do need to make modifications, what would those be? So they're they're in that exploratory phase right now. And there was a issue with report time, so we we got a PRP from Oracle. Um, so the fix is we've already tested in our development environment, in our in our test environment, and now one's moving on to our quality assurance environment. And then there is also a um, we submitted a request, a service request to Oracle. So when you're on the absence request page, the page reloads. If you if you if you navigate to certain areas or click in certain places, and it doesn't announce the reload to the screen reader, um, and that so we're waiting to hear back from Oracle. We, we've submitted the our initial service request on that one. So that's a where we're at with our current service request to Oracle. If you have any anything else that you've experienced, please let me know, and we'll investigate it. Work with Oracle, get a fix, hopefully. Any questions on that? So this is Sandy Main. Um, this uh, next part was to answer any questions um, that came in from the colleges since our last meeting and we didn't receive any. So um, I think we'll just kind of jump over if that's okay, Monica, to college sharing. Um, ask people if they wanna, here's the form, but kind of leave this part open for maybe the colleges or any participants on the call if they have anything they wanna discuss. 
I'll leave it up to you, Monica. Thanks, Sandy. This is Monica. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Well, that's great. Um, I I apologize, but something's going on funky with my Zoom, and I cannot select anything on my screen, including the the chat. So. If folks have been using the chat, I am not seeing those comments anymore. Um, in any case, I'm glad you can hear me. Thank you, Sandy. This would be a great time. We have about 10 minutes left if there are additional uh, comments or questions that folks would like to share or if we need to circle back to previous topics, we can. Um, I also wanted to offer, assuming my Zoom won't completely stop working on me is when we end this conversation, the CTC Link Open Forum, if folks want to stay on the call with me to talk more about the process related questions that were coming up earlier, I can uh, stop recording and, and continue talking with folks who had those questions. So um, Megan, Marissa, AJ, that's an offer for you guys. Okay. So this is Christopher from the State Board. I see a, a question in the chat from, from Allie. I'll go ahead and read the question, if that's all right. Uh, overarching question, does the State Board have any anyone working in CTC Link Accessibility who's a screen reader slash assistive technology user in everyday life? If so, can someone with lived experience in this area be present in these monthly meetings to speak to their experience with these updates? So we don't have someone who is a screen reader in daily, but we do have some very skilled developers who have experience in accessibility, know the WCAG standards and how to develop develop code to meet them. Uh, we And as well as we, we do test our, our development. Um, so um, we, we do, are making sure that the system is, is compliant um, with, with, with everything that we're aware of. Uh, we're so, and if there's if there's anyone using any part of the system with the assistive technology and they're having not a great experience, please please let me know, and we'll get to working with Oracle to get it fixed. This is Monica, the State Board. Can you guys still hear me? Okay, <laughs> so sorry. Uh, thank you for the question in the chat. Thank you, Chris, for, for seeing it and answering it. Um, I still don't have access to chat. Are there any other um, comments or questions from our attendees at this point or any additional comments, Sandy, from, from you or anyone else? <clears throat> Yeah, this is Sandy at the State Board. I don't have anything else. I'm just uh, displaying our next meeting will be October 12th, uh, same time. I do encourage people to um, submit um, items for discussion. It helps us to gather information and make sure that we can provide uh, the information to you at the meeting or sooner. But um, it's, it, it just thinks the responses are a little e better that we can you know, have a little time to prepare. So I encourage people to participate uh, or to add their comments through that. Thanks, Sandy. This is Monica. The, the submission form is located on the uh, webpage for CTC Link Accessibility. So that is where you all can find it. And if you choose to use that, um, I will receive a copy as well as Sandy, and that allows us to prepare topics or prepare questions or answers in advance. Okay, and as we uh, shared earlier, the uh, slide deck presentation and the recording of today's meeting will be available um, after, after today, so you all can review these materials as needed. 
I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, officially close our meeting for today. And thank you everyone for joining us and attending. We really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to do my best to stop recording here. If my Zoom will listen to me. And if folks want to stay on the call, that is fine with me. I'm happy to stick around and talk a little bit more. Well. Mm-hmm.